name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Tomorrow will be the fourth Sunday of Lent. And tomorrow the church will commemorate the Gospel of St. John and the story of the Samaritan woman. I just wanted to say a few things about the story of the Samaritan woman that I find interesting. It's a story about how the Lord can change us, transform us. Without Him, the Lord, we're just like flesh and bones. We just are closer to animals than Him. When we're hungry, we eat. When we're tired, we sleep. When we're thirsty, we drink. Whatever we need, we just take it. With Christ, we become transformed. We become like beacons, like great balls of light that shine throughout the whole world. Without Him, there's darkness. With Him, there's great light. And when we stand with Him and He lifts us up, then our lives can actually change for the better. Sometimes our problem as Christians that have been raised our whole life as Christians is that we start in the light and we slowly drift away into the darkness. Rather than someone that's tasted the darkness and said, I don't want that anymore, I like the light. You can see it in the example of the Samaritan woman. We've heard the story many times. She goes to the well at 12 p.m., the middle of the day, after everyone else has done their job and left, when it's still very, very hot, because she doesn't want to see anybody. She doesn't want anybody to know that she's around. She doesn't want their looks, their talking, their gossip, even though probably in her heart she knows that she deserves it. <laughs> she doesn't want to deal with it. She doesn't talk to anyone in the town. She talks to the man that she's living with now. So there's no sort of give and take with other people. She's dark, living in darkness. She doesn't know anything. Her mind is not illuminated with the Lord. After the Lord comes and speaks to her and tells her about this living water, she leaves her old self behind, literally. It says in the Gospel, I'll read it to you. It's in verse 28 from the Gospel of St. John. It says, The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? So whereas before she didn't want to talk to anybody or see anybody, if she would go to the well in the morning, she would see the rest of the women in the town that are going to the well that are getting water for the day. So she wasn't talking to any of the women much less any of the men. And the men had reason to suspect that she was living in sin and could essentially stone her if they wanted. The law was the same. Before Christ, she didn't speak to anybody. After Christ, she opened up her heart. It was not afraid anymore. So there was no fear. There was only light. Whereas before, she didn't know anything. After she knew the truth, when she spoke to the Lord, she learned of the truth. And so she was free to speak. The, the things that are untrue, the things that are evil, the things that are bad in the world, are secret. We don't say them to anybody. The things that are true and good, we want to share them with everybody. So no one's going to take like a ball of dirt and say, 
hey, look, everybody, I have a ball of dirt. It doesn't make any sense. Or if you go pick up like a snake or a bug and you say, look, I found this awesome bug. No one's going to want to see that. But if you have something beautiful and good, you have like a gem, a diamond. You go and you show people and they're interested. It's beautiful. You're sharing something good. The dark stuff you keep for yourself. The good stuff you share with everybody. So whereas before she was dark and not sharing with anybody, not talking to anybody, not even looking up, now all of a sudden she was sharing because she had something to share, something good, something meaningful, something deep. How do I get it then? What if I've lost everything that's good? What if I currently am living in the same way? How do I find it again? Christ is waiting for us. Waiting for us to come back to Him. With open arms, as we heard last week. And He can transform us to be better. But we just have to ask now. Revelation said, He's knocking at your door. Every time you come to church, every time you hear from your parents or someone that's special or holy in your life, every time you see the Bible as you're passing your living room, every time you see the Agbeya laying there gathering dust, it's like the Lord is knocking at your door and saying, where have you been? You can just come back. Just open it again. And when we do, and we decide to take that step, how great a day is that day? Because we went from hiding and darkness and evil to light and glory and love. The church also helps us in the sense that we have a fast that the church made for this time. We fast with the Lord who transforms us and teaches us. So the Lord doesn't say, hey, you guys go fast and I'll watch you. No, he fasts first. He fasted for us. And then he says, you do the same. So we do the same. Again, we can live in darkness and say fasting is for suckers. I don't know how to fast. Fasting is too hard. I need my protein. I... Or we can live in light and say, the Lord that transformed this Samaritan woman, you can transform me through fasting? Of course. Easy. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to get weaker. I'm not going to have trouble. No, probably not. But we have to take the chance to trust Him. Taban, everybody has zurufu. I don't want to push anybody to do anything. But at the very least, we talk to our Father of Confession and say, These are my, this is my situation. What can I do to fast? Instead of saying, Abuna, I can't fast. <laughs> you see the difference? Like saying, I can't fast versus what I want to fast. What can I do? Type. The doctor said, Kaza, Kaza, Kaza. What can I do? You open up your heart to Him. Instead of living in darkness, you live in light. So fasting can transform? Yes, it can transform. Because all of a sudden you're not thinking about your body, you're thinking about your spirit. You're not thinking about how much you're going to be hurting, you're thinking more about how much you're going to be gaining. I don't pray. That's why God doesn't hear me. Can I switch to, I do pray, today? Yeah. Here in this church now, if you never pray, during the liturgy, you can stand up and pray. And say, God, I need you. I haven't been close to you for a long time. I haven't prayed in so long. I've been lost. Will he hear us? There's no question. Will he be willing to transform us? He's given us that promise. This is your moment now. This is your chance. What about if I am fasting and I'm praying and I'm doing all the things? It's even better. You got a head start. Now what? 
Now I take the acts of righteousness that I'm doing, the acts of faith, and turn them into the fruits of the Spirit. So I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm focusing, I'm staying repentant. That's great. Now you can focus on producing fruit, producing things to share with others. So instead of just worrying and being scared and asking, is this a sin or is this a sin? Am I fasting right? Is this siyami? Is this not siyami? Now you can start forgetting about that silly stuff and move on to better things. I'm producing fruit. I'm making a recipe. And I'm feeding everyone around me in spirit. And they're tasting of this fruit and it's wonderful. It's life-changing. And people are starting to understand now. So everyone here has a role. Whether we think we're here or there, whether we think we're at the starting line or close to the finish line, we have a role in Christ. We have something to do. Let's all stand up and begin to do it. Starting today with this liturgy, we stand up in prayer. If we're not fasting, we say, what can I do to fast? If we're not praying, then we start praying right now. If we're not showing love to one another, then we switch that from now. And we start producing the fruit of good deeds, the fruit of the Spirit. Love, compassion, empathy. Those things now, when we do them, then we can say that we're connected to the Lord. We're like Him. He changed me. He did to me what He wanted to do. And now I'm like Him. If we offer ourselves today and say, I want to change, I want to be transformed, I want to be better, then you will be. And when we do, and when we are, then we can actually be considered sons and daughters of Christ. And glory be to God forever.